the market now. Mitchell Trubisky will be on the market come next Wednesday, although they can start negotiating teams can with the Bills backup come Monday. You have him on your list of overpriced <laughs> free agents. Yet, with Rodgers staying in Green Bay, like, who else are you going to pay? Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, Jameis Winston, Marcus Mariota. I'd go Jacoby Brissett over him. I would go Jacoby Brissett over Mitch Trubisky. I would put Cam Newton over Mitchell Trubisky. What more do we you need put to Cam see? Cam Newton over Mitch Trubisky. Geno Smith, I would put maybe right in the same mix. Like we have seen Mitchell Trubisky, Andrew, for a long time. And I think this is a case of people holding on to these draft profiles. We get really excited in draft season. You remember Mitchell Trubisky coming out of UNC? Like the NFL liked him so much they passed on Patrick Mahomes for him. He's played 50 games in the NFL. At no point in those 50 games was he ranked in the top 25 of PFF's passers in those years. I've seen enough. He's a backup. And I think all those people who had those profiles five years ago are holding on to them. And he's got a powerful agent. And so I wouldn't have even put him on this overpriced list. But there was so much buzz about him in Indianapolis that I just felt like I, was, I had to. Sean McDermott sat next to me uh, a week ago today. And he said, Mitchell Trubisky will be a starting quarterback next year in the NFL. If, there, if there's an injury. I mean, dra draft him top five in the marry your daughter draft. I, I don't really want him as my starting quarterback. I believe he's taken. Um, that is according to the social medias. All right. Uh, Brandon Sheriff with Washington. Offensive line. Uh, guards specifically have gotten paid the last couple of years. He's already been paid in Washington. He hits free agency. And he will get paid a lot. And he's someone, when I put out the list, I got a lot of responses from inside and outside the league that this guy's body's breaking down. You know, he's missed 25 games over the last four years. I don't think he's quite the player that he was when he started this trend of getting the fifth year option, then getting the franchise tag, then getting another franchise tag. He's basically Kirk Cousins, but about 100 pounds lighter, except I think you're getting the worst part of his career if you're signing him to a big deal. So the Bengals are a team that's been whispered about. Buyer beware. I just don't think you're getting that top level availability or production anymore. But Patriots fan Greg also has Stefan Gilmore. He's just a mystery. On this I, list? I, I want to see what he looks like. He missed the first chunk of last year after indicating he was healthy enough to play. I believe people within the Patriots believed he kind of sat out that beginning part of the year. Then when he went to Carolina, if you notice, he only played about 30 or 40 snaps a game. Then he played two full games. Looked solid, didn't look like the old Stephon Gilmore, but then he shut, shut it down. So we've seen him play two healthy games coming off of a hip surgery. I just don't know what I'm getting out of Stephon Gilmore. I know he's going to cost top dollar. Okay, so those are your overpriced guys. Guys who are underpriced, Juju Smith-Schuster is on that list. Now, he had the shoulder injury midseason, didn't play the full year, but he came back at a discount to the Steelers after not being able to break the bank last year in free agency. So I almost know he's not going to break the bank this year. This shoulder injury I'm not worried about long term. He's the type of player I like to pay in free agency. First of all, you can get a discount coming off of an injury. He's young. He's been productive before. You know he can do it. He's still just 26 years old. I, people think of him, oh, he's not a number one receiver. Everyone knows that. But he's a great slot receiver. He's very tough. I think he's a guy you put into your offense. He can get you 70, 80 balls if he's healthy. He can run through receiver. He's great in the locker room. Like, I have no worries about Juju Smith-Schuster. And you get him right now at a discount at a time when receivers are so expensive. If uh, you told me we were going to talk about a Falcons wide receiver on the show today, I would have said Calvin Ridley. You're bringing Russell Gage into the free agency conversation. Th this is why you got to watch the game pass until until late in the year. I'm telling you, he was a dynamic player late in this season. Russell Gage was so much better than I ever thought he could be. It made me feel bad about everything I thought about Russell Gage before the second. Wow. What did you think of Russell I Gage I just before? thought he was a guy. I used to kind of confuse him with Justin Gage, the, the old Titans guy. He can do it all and get open quickly at the line of scrimmage. Like I said, he can go over the middle. He can go deep. This is an NFL where you need three or four wide receivers. I think he's going to get plenty of money, but even then, I'm really excited to go get it. So I was listening to the podcast yesterday on my run, your podcast, and you mentioned maybe Emmanuel Ogba, or maybe Nate Tice had said, maybe Emmanuel Ogba would get more love if he had once been a first-round pick. Aha! Emmanuel Ogba would have been a first-round pick if not for the Patriots losing their pick that year. There were only 31 picks in the draft. He was taken 32nd overall. See, this is why you get the big bucks here. How about the fact, though, that he's never been on a big-time team uh, going into free agency? He had the torn pectoral muscle last time. He ended up signing for two years, $15 million. 
I, I believe that if he went to a big time program or if he played for the Cowboys, with this production, he would be getting 15, 16, 17 million dollars a year. He's had a fairly similar career, I would say, to a Jadevian Clowney. When he is in there, he gets pressure. Pressure is production, and I would be really excited about him because he can move him inside now, play all three downs. He is fantastic. Always been a big fan of Emmanuel Ogba, who was taken 32nd overall the year the Patriots did not have a first-round pick because of shenanigans. You should listen to the podcast. You should read the article under and overpriced free agents on NFL.com. Thank you, Greg Rosenthal. Thank you. I mean All right. <laughs>